Okay, so this is a follow-up to a previous video, and in that video I looked at the question of whether you should stop or turn if you're driving a car and heading towards a wall. Would it be better to stop or better to, be, to turn? And so I'm not going to go over the whole thing. Let me just review the solution. Uh, so if you are stopping, here's a car moving towards this wall stopping, then you have the frictional force pushing backwards and you can calculate the distance that it takes to stop and you get this. It depends on the initial velocity divided by 2 times the coefficient of friction times g. Done. Okay. Now what if you want to turn? So if you want to turn, then uh, the frictional force is to the side and you would turn in, that would cause a centripetal acceleration and you can calculate the radius of turning in that case and you get uh, this similar exp expression initial velocity squared divided by mu times g so it's twice it takes twice the radius to turn so it'd be better to stop okay it's better to stop now I drew this picture right here um, because this was the other question what if it wasn't an infinitely sized wall and I didn't draw this picture correctly but uh, just so you can get the idea what if the wall is not infinitely wide what if it's only a certain wide? Would it be better to, to turn and like miss it? And you don't, you're not always completely changing your velocity in that direction, but you do miss a wall. Okay, so we are going to calculate this. I'm going to calculate how wide that wall needs to be in order to miss it. Uh, and, and in that case, we can see which one would work better. Or when, when would be the point where you could do it either way? Okay, so if the wall is smaller than that, then it'd be better to turn. If the wall is bigger than that, then you would be better to stop. Okay, so here is my circle of radius 2R, a 2S, and I'm S away from the wall. So I have three points here. I put the, the car starting position at the point 0, 0, and this is in two dimensions. Then I have the origin of the circle at 2S, 0, and then I have this point up here where the wall touches a circle, and that is some distance a from the, the center point, and it has a y value of s. And I want to find out that expression. I want to find out what that a is. Okay. So I kind of made this as a, I don't know. I don't know if this works out. I, I kind of, I want to show you two things. So. so here is my expression for the equation of this circle, right? It's x minus the uh, location of this squared plus y squared equals r squared and r is 2s so I get 4s squared. Now I put in my y value of s and I get s squared right there. Then I can subtract s squared from both sides I get 3s squared. Now I can take the square root of both sides and solve for x and I get the square root of 3 times s plus 2 times s. But really that's plus or minus. Okay. When you take the square root, you get plus or minus. I made this mistake, and it was kind of stuffed me for a little bit. So if I factor out the s, I get this location is actually going to be negative square root of 3 plus 2. Okay, the other, the plus value is for where it, the circle, I can make this bigger. Oops, that's not bigger. I forgot I'm not, I'm not in it. Let's see if I go like that. It's going to be more like this. Okay, let me put that right there. So this is going, there's going to be two locations where y is equal to s. The square root of 3 plus 2 is over here, and the square root of three, the 2 minus the square root of 3 is over here, and that's the point I want. Okay, so now let's go to model this, and I've already started this, and oops, it's a little bit too small, but that's fine. Okay, so I've already built this program. Um, let me just run it. There's my two cars, one's turning and one's stopping, and you see that the turning car is going to take a longer distance to stop and it crashed into the wall. And I want to find that point right there. I calculated that, but I need to check it. So this, let's just go over this calculation really quickly. Um, here I have car one. It's a box. Car two it has an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. Uh, it has a mass of one because that doesn't matter. Cancels. Coefficient of friction 0.6. You can change all that stuff. Uh, and this is the backward frictional force on that car. Okay, that's what's going to slow it down. So I use the momentum principle in that force to stop it. I calculated the value of s, how far it's going to be able to stop at that same equation, and that's where I put my wall. So this is all for car 1. Car 2 is the same thing. Uh, same mass, same velocity, different color, okay? So not the same thing. Now, the 
force is tricky here. I, I, can, I want to use the same force, but it's going to change direction. As that car turns, the direction of the force also changes directions. So one way to calculate that is with this little trick here. So maybe I should have drawn a picture. I have the magnitude of F, and then this is the cross product with the Z direction and the velocity. So as the car turns, this is always going to be perpendicular to the velocity, and it'll make it move in a circle. That's a cool little trick. And then I have my time and my dt and then my loop. And then I this one I have to, I don't have to recalculate this force because it's the same, but I do need to recalculate F2. So I put that in the loop. And then here I update the momentum, here I update the position, and so forth. And there you got it. Okay. So then down here I calculated that uh, 2 minus square root of 3. I print that value and I put a ball there. Okay. So let's run it and show that everything works. Boom, right there. See the ball's right in the right. Actually, it's not in the right location because I moved the wall up a distance plus of one point plus one point five. Um, so that the car may basically I don't want that in the center of the car. So I can I can do that up here too. Let's say plus one point five. Just to make it perfect, because I know you're like, it's not on the wall. There. You happy? Cool, huh? Okay. There you go. Now there is the other solution that I, the other question I've never addressed, which is what if you're turning and stopping? Uh, and I don't know if I'll do that one, but that's something in the future. But there you go. You're welcome. I'll talk to you later.